time for the last video in this series. Maybe in the future we'll add some more, but in this series, as we continue to build these topics on each other, each video, we try to keep it as short as we can, focusing only on one clarification or the expression, uh, uh, an explanation of something. In the previous video, we thought talk about the tactics that Agilists use to promote Agile. In this video, I'm going to focus on something that's close to my heart because I come from that industry, which is Capital Project. Uh, often we hear, again, from the Agilist, uh, Agilista, whatever, I, I cannot even pronounce it properly, probably, is that Agile work everywhere outside the software, as we said, including capital and construction project. Now, this is I really love because I am 100% sure that those who make those claims probably never seen a construction site except as they pass on the street. Maybe they see a fence and some construction behind it. They don't know what construction is. They don't know what work happened on the construction project and on a capital project, which means all the work that has to happen before we even reach construction. So people that are ignorant or incompetent, they don't even know probably what Agile is, but they want to sell a certification or they want to sell you a course or whatever else they want. They are promoting it. Agile as the greatest thing that ever happened on Earth, probably since... Uh, the holy book, uh, or if you a religious person, or maybe whatever, something that you really admire. So the greatest invention on earth. <clears throat> so I have to be blunt in this video. And to those people I say, well maybe I'll save it for later. Remember, stock science now. Agile concept is what? The core purpose of the manifesto, unless somebody writes a different manifesto, the core idea behind it is that to produce work in a small increment, continue with delivery, increment that add value, so it's not like you're producing increment to put on the shelf and then you accumulate them until all the product out and then you release them. No, ideally, increment, that means you're releasing. Yeah? You're releasing into use whether internal within the organization, within the customer organization, or whether it's commercial, is a release for commercial gain. So ideally, we do those, to do those increments, we, we need to follow analysis, design, coding, testing, release. So there is a cycle. Now, I would love for anybody listening to this video, and I repeat the challenge I posted online many, many times. Show me how can Agile be used on a capital project beginning to end using this increment, to produce it in increment. Now, please don't tell me, oh, we do the concept study first and then we do the feasibility. This is stage work. This is not agile. This is not incremental. Uh, yeah, maybe it is a form of iterative, but if you want to call that agile methodology now, I, uh, then uh, everything is agile, yeah? Uh, then we might be going to, not to extreme, to the extreme, extreme, extreme of things. Projects are managed across a life cycle with phases and stages. Uh, and we do that uh, in order to make sure that the ultimate purpose of this is to produce a good output that is meet expectation, meet the intent, and deliver benefits. So how can we do that on capital projects? I mean, the only way, remember, increment. If, we, if I break down, let's take the simplest form of a capital project, a house. Yeah? We want to build a house, small house, not a big house. Yeah? How can I use Agile on that as a methodology? Now, remember, Agile with a small A, we can use everywhere. But Agile with a capital A, which means early release of increment in two to four weeks increment, how can I do that? I mean, am I going to sit down and design? I'm going to design the master bedroom right now. I will analyze design size the master bedroom, yeah? And then I will engineer it, and then I will go buy the material, and then I will go construct it, 
test it, release it to the customer. Can I do that in two to four to eight weeks? Even if I can do that, let's say if it's even possible, yeah? Which is not possible, but let's say, let's say, argument's sake, if it is possible. Is that the way we build it? I mean, maybe anciently, in the ancient days, you know, people don't have money, so they build a room. And in that room, they would be where they sleep, and they would eat, and they were uh, uh, cook. For the other stuff, they probably go outside in the wood. And then later, they will build another room, and maybe later with another room. That's ancient time. Today, we cannot do that. It's not even legal. So how can we do it? Remember, the increment has to be complete. So I cannot build, I cannot take a house from idea, concept to closure by design, analyze, uh, engineer, const procure, construct, test, and release room by room, bathroom by bathroom. It's not possible. And then when we make this argument, and then people find out, ah, but we can use it in construction because we do piece by piece. Well, that's work packaging. But again, Let's talk about Agile. I mean, again, the core principle of Agile is not piece by piece. It's that incremental pieces that add value to the customer. So I will do the work and release it. So let's take construction stage of a project. Only the construction piece. Forget the design, the engineering, the analysis, the architectural work, all of that stuff. Let's just focus on the construction phase. Can I do that? Can I do construction in pieces that are incremental work done in two to four weeks and released? Well, sure, I can do work in one week. Actually, it's what we do in construction. We break down our work packages to weekly work packages. So every week we produce something. But we don't even release it to the customer. Do these people even understand, for example, when you have a construction site legally, the owner of that project is not allowed on site without the permission of the contractor. Technically, the legal responsibility for that site is the contractor. Until it is released with what we call it custody transfer. Until at the end of the day when the contractor releases the house to the, con to the owner, technically anything that happened on the site is the legal responsibility of the contractor, which means the contractor can block anybody from coming on site. In many laws around the world, that's the case. So, but again, forget all of that. I'm sidetracking maybe. Yeah, let's focus on this. Let's say, how do we do construction for a house? Well, first I have to clear the site. Great, I clear the site. Maybe one week, depending on how big the house is, if it's a small house or a big mansion, you know, that work might be, uh, you know, maybe from a few days to a few weeks. So I'm done. Hey, customer, come. I finished the site prep. Come and accept it from me. I'm going to release it to you. For what? What am I going to do with it? And last, let's do the underground, the subsurface installation, foundation, putting the piles in. Hey, customer, my piles are there. OK, great. What do you want me to do with it? To do with it? Sit on it? You can read between the lines. So we, even if we do the work in pieces, even if we do the work in pieces, we cannot release it. So please. Agilists, Agilistas, Agile Fanatics, please go find a table and hide under it. Save us from your incompetence and your ignorance. Stick to what you know, assuming you know even Agile and the software word. When you start to speak out of context, when you start to speak about things that you don't even have a clue about, you lose credibility. Maybe not immediately with everybody, but sooner or later. Just be selfish. Think of yourself. Yeah? Be quiet. Sorry, or I shouldn't be sorry that in the last two videos, this one and the previous one, I basically, I wanted to say it the way it is. I hope my message in this short series is clear. My message clarify many misconceptions. And of course, you're free to agree, disagree. 
And you can vote with your opinion down below whether you can say like or dislike. Either case, if you think this series of videos are of value, please don't hesitate to subscribe to our channel so you can see future series. And by the way, we already have more than 180 videos already on our site. And to get these videos regularly, you can subscribe. I would really welcome any challenge to anything we said here. Let us hear. Good, bad. I would even say critique us as much as you like. We know the difference between critique and criticism. In order to learn together, we need to be honest. We need to be open to learning. We need to focus on benefit. We need to focus on the community. Once we put the commercial gain first, then really it's not learning anymore. Have a wonderful time and appreciate you taking the time to listen to us. Thank you.